I'm Jim Benson, and you're listening to TV Time Machine. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and visit our show archives at tvtimemachine.com. As new CDC field officers, you are about to embark on a mission to the far corners of the Earth, and you will witness horrors others cannot imagine. This is no game. The stakes are very real. Today on the TV Time Machine, we seek out a case of immunity as we encounter Helix. In this edition of our program, we are pleased to welcome Billy Campbell, the star of the new sci-fi series about an outbreak threatening humanity, Helix. Mr. Campbell is a popular actor having appeared in the classic film The Rocketeer, Killing Lincoln, and is probably best known for playing Rick Samler in the TV series Once and Again. Over the next segment, Billy Campbell will help us explore virtually every aspect of this pulse-pounding series, which airs Fridays at 10 p.m. on Sci-Fi. Again, for those of you intrepid enough to put on a biosuit, feel free to put yourself under a microscope as we inoculate ourselves from the past in order to be exposed to the present. Billy, thank you for coming on board the TV Time Machine. Well, thanks for having me. Now, you star in the new series Helix, which airs Fridays at 10 p.m. on Sci-Fi. Tell us about your character, Dr. Alan Farragut, and what Helix is all about. Well, um, Alan Farragut is a scientist with the Center for Disease Control, and he and a group of his um, folks from the CDC go up to the Arctic Circle to investigate a viral outbreak, to contain a viral outbreak at a super secret biological research facility, uh, as I said, in the Arctic Circle. And they get there to contain this viral outbreak and quickly realize that uh, all is not as it seems. And so Helix is a... Um, is a very claustrophobic, very exciting sort of edge of the seat um, thrill ride into this situation. Now, there's also a bit of a romantic triangle going on in Helix. Tell us about that. Yes, that's right. Um, he uh, included in the group uh, going up to contain the outbreak are uh, his um, his wife, his ex-wife. Um, <clears throat> and his current love interest, who is also a young scientist at the CDC. Um, and one of the three infected, the uh, initial three infected people up at the base in the Arctic happens to be his, his brother, with whom his ex-wife had an affair. So there's all kinds of juicy <laughs> stuff going on, aside from the um, viral outbreak. So what events led to you becoming involved in Helix? What led to me uh, becoming involved in Helix? Uh, I'm not exactly sure how or why. It, 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 uh, it came to me, and, and, um, and I said yes. <laughs> <laughs> what were some of the reasons why you said yes? Well, I said yes because I'm a, I'm a big fan of science fiction. I, I particularly like this, uh, you know, this um, kind of sub-genre of science fiction. You know, people sort of sequestered in some remote place that they can't get out of uh, with something evil on the loose. Um, it kind of reminds me, it's reminiscent of a, of a few films that I dearly love, um, both um, uh, The Thing, um, uh, John Carpenter's The Thing, as well as Howard Hawks' The Thing, and um, and also The Andromeda Strain, another oh, yeah. great film from the, I think the mid '70s that I uh, that I uh, dearly loved. And um, so I'm a big fan, and, and I'm kind of a fanboy, and, and uh, I signed a bid, uh, you know, based on that. Yeah, I love The Andromeda Strain too. That was Michael Crichton's movie. It probably is his first big movie. And there are definitely echoes of it. Now, speaking of speaking of feature films, Helix really has a feature film look to it. What has impressed you most about the production of this series? Well, it's the same thing that impresses me about the production of any series: the fact that they can pull so many disparate kind of elements. 
strengths and skills together to expose a tiny piece of film um, to, to make something so fantastic. It's a, you know, I, I'm not sure you, you know, your listeners maybe know, but it's an incredible logistical feat, the, the, the making of a, of a series or of a film. Um, and that's the thing that's most immediately impressive to me, uh, uh, all of the skill that goes into creating something like this, the set designers and builders and decorators, the makeup folks, the camera people, the, you know, uh, it's, a, it's, it's a logistical uh, nightmare, really, that, that, uh, that they caused to turn out very, very well. And uh, that's the thing that's most impressive to me. Well, speaking of impressive, the makeup is impressive for the series. Is it as affecting in person as it is on screen? Oh, you better believe it. We, we um, you know, the, um, as I said before, the, the, uh, one of the initial uh, infectees is my, uh, my brother, played wonderfully by uh, Neil uh, Napier, um, a Canadian actor, and shooting the pilot, uh, I think it was maybe our first day or so um, at lunch, he came, he came to sit at the lunch table, and he was in, in his sick makeup, right. and I mean, it had a visceral effect on all of us. We, <laughs> I wanted to cover my food and move away from him, because he was, it, it, I felt like I was going to be infected. <laughs> Yeah, that must have been pretty difficult. Also, what probably was difficult is working in those biosuits. Was that particularly tough for you? In the biosuits? No. Actually, the biosuits were pretty uh, pretty comfortable. I thought they might be uh, uncomfortable before I was in them. Um, but they had a, um, you know, they had a circulation kind of a, um, a circulation unit uh, that we wore on the belt that kept the air moving around the, the head and the face. Um, so they were they were actually fairly comfortable. They they're not the most flattering of things unless you look like you know either um, you know some kind of uh, Adonis or something. They 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 don't you know any kind of bump or lump you have they, it pokes out there. So not terribly flattering to wear, and they they do make a lot of noise. So what it means is later on we have to do uh, uh, looping ADR right. dubbing. Um, uh, go in a sound studio and, and redo your dialogue because the uh, because the suit was uh, making noises all over the messing up the dialogue. Now, of course, Helix was filmed in Montreal. What was it like filming there for you? Did you enjoy that? I love Montreal. I love it. I love it. I love it. It's. Uh, I love the place. It's. It's maybe my favorite North American city. It, and I just loved it. I can't say enough about Montreal. It's a fabulous city. And uh, if we get picked up for a second season, I, I, hope, I hope we get to go back to Montreal. Billy Campbell, the star of Helix, which airs Fridays at 10 p.m. on Sci-Fi. Billy, it's been a tremendous pleasure having you aboard the TV Time Machine. Feel free to join us again in the future or in the past. <laughs>